Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. I'm working on a refrigeration unit here that has uh, got a bad pressure switch. And I'm going to show you how I came to that conclusion. So, first step when I came down here, put the low side gauge onto the unit. Again, this is a, a type of port. I obviously took the cap off of here and here already, as you can see. Those are the style caps. And, uh, in order to have this port have access, you actually have to slightly close this valve. So I'm just going to turn it just slightly. You'll hear the Freon. And I'm gonna tighten this up. That was just so that you could see the way that opens. So now that that's open, I know that I have 112 PSI up here. And so that should be more than enough pressure to turn on my low pressure switch, which is right here. And so this is uh, pretty much the first thing I checked. Um, I made sure that the breaker was not tripped and that it was turned on. Now, you're just going to set your e electrical uh, tester to volts, alternating current, and then we're going to go ahead and check for voltage between the two terminals on the pressure switch. I'll leave a link in the description to this exact uh, multimeter that works really terrifically for HVAC and refrigeration work. Uh, so, right here, first of all, we can see that our our trip in pressure should be about 15 psi, uh, but obviously the unit is not running. Uh, now, there could be an electrical problem somewhere else, but if the problem is right here, then we'll get an indicator right away here when I put my my lead, my probes on these two terminals. Okay, so I've got my probes there, and the multimeter says 216 volts. So. That means that there is no connection between those two terminals. If this pressure switch was working correctly and the problem was elsewhere, then uh, there would be zero volts between uh, these two terminals because it'd be like testing, you know, two spots on the same wire. There's not going to be any, any difference because that would have been closed. The other way you could test this is to turn the power off and disconnect one of these wires, and um, and then do a continuity test between this terminal and that terminal to see if uh, the valve or the valve the switch was closed or not so I know that uh, something is going on with this switch so what we're going to do now is bypass it temporarily just to test to make sure that everything else is working correctly make sure we get the power turned off now you can see now here that I've uh, moved the wire that was on this terminal up to here so now I've got both of the wires stacked on right right there, so this switch has effectively been bypassed. So if that truly was the problem, we should be able to turn the breaker back on here and everything should fire up, so we'll see how that goes. So there you have it, the unit is running again. Uh, I'm going to replace this low pressure switch, but I'm also going to I'm going to put in a pressure switch that has both the high cutout as well as the low pressure switch portion of it, uh, because then I'll add an additional layer of protection for this unit. Right now it only has a low pressure switch, so I'm going to add a high pressure switch because it won't cost um, hardly any extra, maybe a little bit, but uh, just a little bit extra to protect that compressor. I'll show you a pressure switch that has both the high pressure cutout and the low pressure. I think I've got one right here. This is an old used one, uh, but I'll just show you kind of how it works. It's got the same things going on as that other one does there with the, uh, the cut in and cut out. This is for the low pressure side of it. And then this is a high pressure um, cut out. So that if uh, the condensing fan were to stop working or something like that, uh, then it would cut the unit off so that it doesn't wreck itself. Um, so basically that's it for now. Um, this is a pump down t type system, so once the, um, once the thermostat meets in the cooler, it'll shut the solenoid valve up off, and then the unit will pump itself down until it gets below that pressure threshold, and then that low pressure switch will shut off the unit uh, once it gets down below that pressure. And then when it comes back on again, the 
thermostat will open the solenoid valve, Freon will flood through the evaporator, the pressure will come up, once the pressure gets up past that threshold, it will turn on the unit again, and that's kind of how a pump down system works. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please rate it up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And uh, yeah, like I said, there'll be a link in the description to the electrical meter that I recommend. And uh, I appreciate you stopping by and taking the time to watch this video. We'll talk to you in the next one.